Well, good evening, everyone. I hope you're doing well. And this is your Royal Daily News for November 13th, 2022. In Luxembourg City, Her Royal Highness Grand Duchess Maria Theresa of Luxembourg, Her Royal Highness Hereditary Grand Duchess Stephanie of Luxembourg, and Her Royal Highness Princess Amalia of Luxembourg, attended the 61st edition of the Luxembourg International Bazaar, held at the Lux Expo, The Box. The Luxembourg International Bazaar is the largest international fundraising event in Luxembourg that aims to financially support and promote charities in all corners of the world. The bazaar is also run entirely by volunteers with, quote, different nationalities, cultures, and traditions, all working together toward a common goal to help people in need, focusing on victims of poverty, violence, and or social isolation, with a focus on empowering women and girls. The bazaar also combines the act of raising money for charities with organizations of an event that is a fun and multicultural feast for the senses and attracts thousands of visitors to the halls of the Lux Expo The Box each year. About 60 countries, all with their own beautiful stands, participate each year to sell food, drinks, and a myriad of non-food items like arts, jewelry, clothing, Christmas decorations, and much more that are either made in their own country or typical for their country." End quote. Last evening in Limpertsburg, their Royal Highnesses Grand Duke Henri and Grand Duchess Maria Theresa of Luxembourg attended the opening of the 126th edition of the Artistic Circle of Luxembourg and the presentation of the Werner Prize held at the Tranchamp. During the event, the Grand Duchess as High Patron presented the Werner Prize, which is endowed with 2,500 euros to two artists, photographer Mr. Mika Heinenen and painter Ms. Chantal Maquette. The Artistic Circle of Luxembourg will be open to the public until November 27, 2022. In London, Their Majesties King Charles III and the Queen Consort of the United Kingdom, Their Royal Highnesses the Prince and Princess of Wales, Her Royal Highness the Princess Royal and Vice Admiral Sir Timothy Lawrence, Their Royal Highnesses the Earl and Countess of Wessex, His Royal Highness the Duke of Kent, and Their Royal Highnesses the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester attended the annual Remembrance Day service at the Cenotaph on Whitehall. Leading the service was His Majesty the King, who placed a, quote, new wreath, the design of which pays tribute to the wreath of His Majesty's grandfather, King George VI and Queen Elizabeth II. The wreath's poppies are mounted on arrangement of black leaves, as is traditional for the sovereign, and its ribbons bear the king's racing colors of scarlet, purple, and gold. The royal racing colors were also incorporated into wreaths of King George V, King George VI and Queen Elizabeth II, end quote. Watching from the balcony at the Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office were Her Majesty the Queen Consort of the United Kingdom, Her Royal Highness the Princess of Wales, Her Royal Highness the Countess of Wessex, His Royal Highness the Duke of Kent, and Their Royal Highnesses the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester. According to Buckingham Palace, for the first time a wreath was laid on Her Majesty's behalf by an equerry from the royal household. The Queen's consort's wreath bears Her Majesty's racing colors, inherited from her grandfather, and echoes the wreath from previous Queen Consort Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother. His Majesty the King and the Queen Consort's wreaths have been produced by the Poppy Factory and is accompanied by handwritten cards bearing Their Majesty's new ciphers. Following the service, His Royal Highness the Earl of Wessex took the salute at the March Past of Veteran Organizations on Horse Guards Parade. Last evening, members of the British Royal Family attended the annual Royal British Legion Festival of Remembrance held at the Royal Albert Hall. This year's theme reflected on the values of service and included a special tribute to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, who was the Royal British Legion's patron for 70 years. In Marseille, France, Their Serene Highnesses Prince Albert II and Princess Charlene of Monaco attended the 2022 Autumn Nations Series International Rugby Test Match between France and South Africa, held at the Velodrome Stadium. France won the Test Match 30-26. On Friday evening in Larvodo, Monaco, 
the Sovereign Prince attended the opening of the exhibition entitled Gunsborg Years in Monte Carlo, 1892 to 1951, held at the Grimaldi Forum. The exhibition, organized by the Monte Carlo Opera, showcases the extraordinary life of the former director of the Monte Carlo Opera, from his appointment by Prince Albert I in 1892. In Amman, His Majesty King Abdullah II of Jordan inaugurated the second ordinary session of the 19th Parliament. Attending this morning's opening session were Her Majesty Queen Rania of Jordan, His Royal Highness Crown Prince Al Hussein bin Abdullah II of Jordan, and Princess Muna Al Hussein of Jordan, the mother of His Majesty the King and the second wife of the late King Hussein bin Talal of Jordan. In his speech, to the senators, representatives, and to the people of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, His Majesty said, quote, State institutions must redefine national achievements so that its outcomes are tangible for citizens. We will not accept regression or hesitation in accomplishing these objectives, end quote. His Majesty also noted that Jordan has made considerable progress in setting the sturdy foundations for modernizing the state and enhancing its resilience, stressing that national efforts aim to serve present and future generations in fulfillment of the ambitions and aspirations of all Jordanians. His Majesty the King also stressed that political and economic modernization are incomplete without competent public administration adding that Jordan was founded on the principles of justice and national dignity, and it will continue its journey of modernization under the rule of law. His Majesty also said that the new Jordan is led by young men and women with their limitless aspirations and relentless resolve, noting that the country must capitalize on its unique geopolitical location by building broad Arab and regional partnerships that serve mutual interests and maximize national gains. And finally, in Akashi, their Imperial Majesties Emperor Norohito and Empress Masako of Japan attended the opening ceremony of the 2022 Festival of Celebration for Maritime Resources. The theme of this year's festival is Let's Expand the Blue and Rich Sea. In his opening speech, the Emperor said, quote, It is our duty to preserve this rich marine environment, properly protect and manage marine resources, and then pass it on to the next generation. It is an important mission given to us." End quote. In the afternoon, their majesties participated in a fish-releasing ceremony at Akashi Port. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will be back tomorrow on Monday, November 14th with all the latest world news. Until then, I wish you all a wonderful Sunday evening and a great week ahead. And don't forget to like, share, and, well, subscribe. <laughs> okay. Take care, everyone. I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.